Hi all, this is Anjali and from today's video we are going to start the series where we are going to solve question papers, previous year question papers, question by question. Like I have told you that you get seven questions in your final board exam and they have different weightage. So we will be doing each question in one session from any of the previous year paper. So like first thing I told you is my SQL, that's the most scoring and it has the maximum weightage. So MySQL comes for 30 marks in your final board exams. And once you are prepared with MySQL, that means your those 30 marks are prepared. So you're going to get 30 for sure out of 70 and then you can prepare for the rest of the thing. Now what we are going to do is that we will be picking up one paper from the previous year papers and I'll be solving question number three first from all the papers. And then I'll be solving question number four, five, six, seven, all of them. But first we are focusing on DBMS. So we will be focusing on question number three, five, and six. Question number three together carries 10 marks. Same with question number five and six. But in the initial videos, we will be doing only question number three of all the papers. Then I'll be doing question number five of all the papers and question number six of all the papers. If you go through all these videos thoroughly, and you're able to solve the questions of your own after watching these videos, that means you are thorough with your MySQL part. So this is not the time when you're going to open the books and start reading what SQL is. Now you know the basics of SQL, you know some stuff of SQL, now we just need to apply it properly in the exam. So for every year, there are papers like uh, outside Delhi and Delhi for the board paper. Like this paper which we are going to discuss today is 2017's question paper outside Delhi. And after this, in the next video, I'll be discussing you the Delhi board paper. Okay, first of all, let's discuss about the outside Delhi question number three that belongs to MySQL. Now, the first question, A part, says, how is the database related to a table? Now, this is a question which you will not get as such in any of the books or uh, notebooks because this is not a typical theory question. You have to put in your brains and just think like how a table is related to a database. So a database is defined as a collection of tables. So table is one small unit in a database. So for one mark I can write the answer like this. A database is a collection of tables. For example, if school is a database, there can be tables in it related to school like a table of student, a table of teacher, etc. That's how we can explain what a table is and how it's related to database. So your one mark answer is enough for this. Okay, now question number B. Question number B says, Arya wants to add another column, gender, in the already existing table customers. She has written the following statement. However, it has errors. Rewrite the correct statement. It's again for one mark. The statement is modify table customers gender care one now modify is no command in my sql we have update and alter table update is a dml to modify the data so the command which we have to use over here is alter table which is used to add a new column so the answer for the question should be alter table the name of the table is customers then what we have to do we have to add we have to add a column named gender and its data type should be one character if we are just going to take M or F for its value. If you want to store male, female, then I can take like varchar 10. So it's up to you since it's not mentioned in the question. But since we have to just recorrect the statement given over there, so I've also taken gender care one. So alter table is used to add a new column to an existing table. Okay. Then comes question number C, that's for two marks. It says, in a hospital, the patients are allotted two wards. Like, it's a hospital, there are patients which are in different wards. Now, a database named hospital is created. One table in this database is ward with ward ID, ward name, number of beds as columns, and ward ID is the primary key. Okay, so this table is already there. Now, they're asking, write another suitable table you could expect to see in the hospital database with three suitable columns identifying the primary key 
and foreign key in the table that you expect. So this is a totally reasoning based question. You just have to apply your logic there and think like which other table should be there in the hospital database. So which other table should be there? Obviously, if it's a hospital, we would be having doctors, we would be having patients. So I can have a table for doctor or I can have a table for patient. Let's say I decide to have a table for patient. So I'll write a table for patient can be there. Now what should be the columns in that? They've asked to say three columns out of which one has to be primary key and one has to be foreign key as well. So I think what columns should be there? So columns should be patient ID. We need to identify the patient. So we should have an ID for the patient. So patient ID should be there. Then obviously name of the patient should be there. And in which ward the patient is. For that I can have ward ID. So columns could be patient ID, name and ward ID. And out of this obviously since it's primary table, uh, it is patient table. So primary key of the table should be patient ID. Because primary key is that which uniquely identifies a row. So patient ID will uniquely identify one patient. So primary key is patient ID. And foreign key is the one which will help you to link with another table. So in this case, we can link the record of a patient with a ward with the help of ward ID. Foreign key is ward ID. For example, if there is a patient having ID as 108 and his name is Ankur and he is in ward ID 2. So I can find out the details of the ward from the matching ward ID. So that's how they can be linked. So that's why ward ID should be the foreign key. Okay. D part is explain the following statement with the help of an example. In a transaction, either all the SQL statements be committed or all rolled back. Now, a transaction is a set of SQL statements. When you have number of SQL statements together, it's called transaction. And this statement says that either all of those SQL statements should be executed or all of them should be cancelled, that is rollback. So committed means either all should be saved or all should be cancelled. This feature is also called as atomicity. Atomicity of transaction says that either all the SQL statements in a transaction be committed or all rolled back. Now you have to explain this with the help of an example. Now for example, I have to uh, issue a book from the library. So if I have to issue a book from the library, I have table for member and in that I have a column which stores that how many books are issued to the member. So I should have a transaction or I should have commands in the transaction which says that update number of books. I have to increase number of books basically for the member. So I'll write update member set number of books is equal to number of books plus one where member ID is equal to three, four, five, anything like this. Similarly, there is a book table also and that also has number of copies. When a book is issued, then the number of copies should decrease by one. So I'll have another update command which will update the table books and set number of copies should be decreased by one. Number of copies minus one where book ID is equal to 77. Now let's say these two SQL queries make a transaction. So now either both of them should execute and commit or none of them should execute and commit. Both of them should be rolled back. 
because if the changes have to be done then it has to be done both in the member table as well as in the book table otherwise in none of them that's why we say that a transaction is either committed means all its parts should be saved or none of its parts should be saved because if i have a book which is increased in the member but is not decreased from the book table that means my data is not correct so either it has to be completed or not done at all okay that's how we say a transaction is atomic that it's executed as one unit okay now comes the question e given below is the department table we have these three records now set auto commit is zero that means set auto commit is off automatically nothing would be committed we have to specifically write commit or roll back then update department set department name is equal to office where department name is equal to admin so it will change this admin to office okay then insert into department values 104 comma hrd so one more record will be added here with department number 104 and department name as hrd after that again we have an update command where we update the table set department name as front office where department name is reception so this reception becomes front office after that there is a statement commit now when we write commit the changes made by these three statements like the admin is changed to office reception is changed to front office and there is one more record 104 these are saved permanently now this is saved in the table then comes delete from department where department name is equal to front office that means this reception has been changed to front office so department code 102 this line will be deleted this line will be deleted from the table but right after that there is roll back so roll back means this deletion would be cancelled it will not cancel anything above commit because once a thing is committed it is never roll back so the only roll back performed would be this delete command so whatever was deleted will come back that means this front office record is not deleted anymore it will come back and then after that they have written select star from department and you have to show what all will be displayed so what all will be displayed it will display the def code and def name in def code i have 101 but the department name admin has been changed to office then we have 102 it was deleted but it is roll back so it is back over there and this would be front office and then 103 that is personal and then comes the newly inserted record which was 104 the department is hrd that's how we show the result after all the roll back and commit okay now another question for two marks is how is having clause similar to where clause and how is it different from where clause explain with the example of each okay so having and where both are used to check condition so that is the similarity so i write down the similarity first similarity is both are used to check conditions and the difference is that where is used to check condition on individual rows whereas having is used to check condition on groups and having can be used only where you have group by otherwise we can't use it so difference is that where is used to check conditions for individual rows whereas having is used to check conditions on a group having has to be used with where group by 
has to be used with group by only but there is no such condition or restriction on where now example could be like if i just need to show all the employees who earn more than 50000 so i would write where i'll write select star from employee where salary is greater than 50000 so this condition will be checked for each and every row and each and every employee will be compared for this condition but if i need to show those departments where the average salary is above 50000 so i can write select department from employ group by department having average salary greater than 50,000. So when you have a group function, it has to be checked with the help of having. So select department from employee, group by department, so it will make groups on the basis of same departments first, and then it will check if the average salary is greater than 50,000, then only it will show the department name. So here this condition is checked for each group, whereas in where the condition is checked for each row. So that's the example to show the use of group by and where. So that's how you have to answer the question for different types in your question number three. So this shows that question number three is not fixed about which type of questions would be there. It will be anything related to SQL for two or one mark in total and the whole thing comes for 10 marks. This is how we answer for the questions and we'll be discussing the next paper in the next video. I hope you understood the answers and how to write the answers. In case of any doubts, do write in the comment section and for suggestions as well. And yes, if you really like the video, you understood something from it, do share it with your friends and click the like, bu like button as well. And subscribe the channel so that you are informed about the upcoming videos. Thank you.